Hey everyone, and welcome to Concept Recovery, the series where I review, redraw, and uh, rediscover some of my old concepts, uh, while also giving them a little bit of a fresh coat of paint and talking about where I would go with their stories if I were to rewrite them now, if I have an interest in that. Uh, you don't have to watch the first episode, it is completely separate from the content of this one, However, I would recommend you watch it, <laughs> if you want to. Uh, this episode is about my first character that I ever made, like I said, uh, Autumn Shine. Autumn Shine was a self-insert. She was supposed to be uh, White Wing's sister, like from Cloudtail and Brightheart's first letter. Uh, her story pretty much goes that the night before uh, the clans are about to leave to go on the journey to the, uh, new territories. Uh, Autumn Pa remembers, uh, her grandmother, who she'd been brought to see as a child. Not wanting her grandma to worry, not wanting Princess to worry, she decided in to go alone to find her and tell her what was about to happen. It was the middle of the night and she snuck out of camp. I know, a great idea. <coughs> The thing was, she was an apprentice, and Autumn Pa hadn't known her grandmother uh, very well, and hadn't seen her since she had been a kitten. So, finding her would have, was going to be difficult, and she wasn't really prepared for it. Not alone, not in the darkness, not when she was too distracted thinking about everything that was going to happen, and when they moved. She made an error. She jumped, she jumped without really thinking about it, into the garden of a two-leg, thinking that it might be princesses. She was wrong. She was confronted with a, with a giant, snarling dog, and was, uh, well, attacked. At first she held her own, but eventually it got a hold of her, and it, f and it like, shook her in its jaws, and it flung her at a tree. Uh... If you can't tell by the art, by the way, she was paralyzed, and her hitting this tree is how she was paralyzed. <coughs> I will just be going over the story bits as they were when I first wrote this character, but there is, uh, there are things that have been, like, that I have added in Thought Experiment with her since. So... She hits this tree, but she's flung back over the fence of the two-leg garden, and she hits a tree, and she's knocked out, and pretty much she's just bleeding out, um, <laughs> because, you know, she's been mauled by a dog, which isn't great. So, they f the next morning, uh, ThunderClan finds her, and apparently Cinderpelt's just like, I don't think we can save her, let's go. <laughs> and everyone's like, uh, okay, I guess. So, her unconscious body is left on the, uh, like, at the edge of Two Lake Place. And Star Clan, uh, she's not in Star Clan. She's in this place between Star Clan and the Forest Clans. Like, literally between. She's floating in an empty space above the forest, but below the stars. Uh,. <laughs> Yeah, great concept. So, eventually, a Star Clan cat, I believe it was supposed to be Spotted Leaf, takes pity on her and, uh, like, I guess gives their blessing so that she might be healed enough to, like, recover. So, for a little bit, she stays with the elders who were abandoned on the territory, uh, after she wakes up, because she's trying to, you know, learn how to move around with paralyzed legs, and once she kind of gets a, the hang of moving, she leaves the elders to go, uh, to go chase after the clan cats, because she believes that she is a clan cat and won't give up on that dream to die with the elders. Uh, on the way there, she meets Ravenpaw and Barley, who convince her to stay with them. She's a young apprentice. She's too young to be going through that hard, hard journey on her own. The clan, they don't even know if the clans made it. 
let alone this one child. But the bone knife is easy for a cat who's paralyzed and at a disadvantage. A bone knife would be a life that she could easily live, and they are gay men, so she's pretty much their adopted daughter for a while. But she's never really happy there. She she enjoys Ravenpaw and Barley's company, and they enjoy hers, but she just doesn't feel completed. She doesn't feel whole. Not not without her mom not knowing her parents not like knowing if she's okay, not knowing if they're okay. So when uh, Grace Stripe and Millie show up to the barn, uh, they get to know her pretty well, and when they eventually move on to go f- chase after the clans, she asks if she can go with, and they say yes. It's a long journey, and they're slowed down by the fact that she has to be accommodated for. But she does make it because she's strong, and she's smart, and she figures it out. When they get to the clans, obviously her mother is ecstatic. T- her, her, both of her parents and her sister are ecstatic to see her. They'd assumed her dead. And it's, it's a good time. Everyone is very glad that she's alive. And, the, and she's back with Graystripe. So I think from there her story was just like, she is a warrior, she walks around, until Millie's, uh, until Bright, until Millie's daughter, Bright, Briar Paw, gets injured in a similar way to, uh, Autumn, Autumn Shine, which is the warrior name she's given because of, uh, like, her continued light or whatever, I don't know. So Autumn, when Briarlight is injured, Autumn Shine steps in to immediately be like, hey, you can't give up on your dreams of, like, living a warrior's life, I can show you, I can, like, kind of be your mentor, and help you figure it out because you don't know yet and that's fine but you shouldn't just give up on your dreams of being a real clan like a not a real clan cat i mean that might have been how i thought about it back then but because you know i was a child who didn't understand things but that's not the right way to think about it i think she would have she was like you can't give up on your dreams of living a warrior's life of like getting to do all the things that you enjoyed before so let me show you how to, uh, like, be more mobile. And pretty much she existed to stop Briarlight from being mistreated by the books. Uh, however, like, looking back on it, there are definitely things I would change. Like, I think that just having her stay with Ravenpaw and Barley might be funny. Like, might might be fun. But if I did continue to, like, get her back to the clans, I don't know. I think that there's nothing wrong with Briarlight finding happiness in a life that isn't that of a warrior. So I think that Autumn Shine's job, she'd probably end up being more like a uh, caretaker. Like... Not a proper warrior, or not a proper, like, uh, nursery queen, but she would hang out in camp most of the time because of the risks that face a a paralyzed cat going outside, and she would, for the most part, just stay in camp and help, because she was a very energetic cat that wouldn't have liked to, uh, like lay around all day or retire early, but she wouldn't have, uh, I don't think she would have objected to not going out as much. I think that she'd still encourage, she'd still, like, go to the lake occasionally, but mostly she'd stay in camp and she'd entertain, she'd watch kits and she would, uh, make sure everyone was taken care of. Maybe she'd even learn a little bit about, uh, medicine from her mom, who, uh, because Brightheart learned about herbs as well. That could be cute. She would probably end up just being, like, someone who stays in camp, and when Briarpaw would be injured, instead of being like, you have to be a warrior, uh, deal with your disability, she'd instead be like, hey, <laughs> you don't need to worry about, uh, what you give to the clan. You have value even if you aren't uh, even if you aren't hunting or patrolling, and don't let your mother take that away from you. 
Also, I don't think that if Autumn, if Millie had known Autumn Paw the whole time, like while she was injured, I don't think that Millie would have been as awful, which would have been, I, I, it would have been preferred that Millie isn't terrible to her daughter. And maybe having Autumn Paw and Autumn Paw already proving to her that, like, she can live a fulfilled life, obviously, with, even if she's injured, uh, would maybe prevent some of that awfulness from Millie. <laughs> I don't know, this isn't a concept I really plan to explore very much. Like, I don't really intend to... I, I might reuse the design and the dog attack idea for something, but I would not... I would not, uh, reuse the self-insert character idea. I don't... I I'm not really a fan. <laughs> uh, I, I just don't like doing self-inserts. Anyways, that's pretty much all of her story. I think that it's not awful, considering the fact that I was, uh... Probably, like, a 10, maybe? <laughs> 10 or 11? I couldn't have been very old, because... Uh... Just around the time that I started getting into the books, and... I don't know. It... I, I did have fun doing this and redrawing her, even if her design changed a lot. I don't think that there's anything wrong with her design changing. I, uh, I think it's much better now. <laughs> Obviously her old design was like on a gray, I don't know where the gray was supposed to have come from, uh, at all. I think that now she actually looks like her mom, which is nice. I think that the irony of her being Brightheart's daughter and also being mauled by a dog would have been very fun to explore, uh, if she was a character that I continued to use. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The speed punch should be wrapping up sometime soon. Let me know, like, what you think. Do you, did you have any cringe self insertacies when you were a kid? Um, uh, I don't know. Just, what, what do you think of this character? Should I use the design for something? Uh, I'm kind of running out of characters that, like, come to mind when I think of stuff for more concept recovery episodes. So, I might, uh, I might have to, like, look through some of my old files to find some. And I'll probably be moving away from Warriors a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day. Bye.